Prototyping with variables in Figma is really powerful. And in this video, we're gonna learn about it making this car prototype fully interactive in less than 10 minutes. Without wasting your time, let's dive right into it. As always, if you wanna follow along the video, the Figma link is in the description below. Here we have three frames, the product page, the empty card, and a card with items, and also have three components. And if we check the prototype, by the way, to quickly open the preview, I press shift space. And here we have basic interactions. I can go to the card, I can come back, and the auto card button goes to the second variant and counts back to the default one. Now let's try to add some interactions on the stepper so that we can increase and decrease the quantity. First, we need to go to local variables. If you're not seeing this menu here, press escape to deselect all your elements and then make sure you are in the design tab. So we open local variables and we're going to rename the collection as product interactions. And here, the first variable that we're going to create is a number and we're going to call it product quantity. And the first value will be one. To link the text layer to the variable, we click on the layer, come here in the text section, and here we link it to the product quantity. Now that the number is linked to a variable, we can add interactions to the plus and minus. We select this, go to prototype, add interaction. We're gonna leave this on tab. You need to know that to be able to interact with set variables and add conditionals, you need to have a paid version of Figma. You're not gonna be able to do it on a free version I know it's annoying, but it's understandable. These are very advanced features. So we want to set variable and we only have one variable right now. So we select product quantity and we want to set this variable to product quantity plus one and we press enter. And now if I quickly open my preview again, when I click, you can see that it's working. Now let's go with the minus. I select the minus, I'm here in interaction. And this time, instead of setting variable directly, we're going to add a conditional because we don't want to go below one. We don't want this to be zero or negative numbers. So we can do that with conditions. Here we have if product quantity is higher than one. And here we go to set variable product quantity. We're going to set to product quantity minus one. Again here. We add numbers and decrease it. And when it gets to one, nothing happens. Good. Now let's make it so that add to cart actually adds something to your cart. And we're going to do that by using Boolean variables. Before that, I want to make all the elements visible on this layer. This one and this one. Now I will go to local variables and I will create a Boolean variable this time. And I will call it empty cart. And this will be true as initial state. And now to link a frame to a variable, you need to select the frame and come here on layer. And this is kind of hidden. You need to right click here on the eye and there you can find all your Boolean variables. And now you can see that this layer is linked to our variable. Now I want these two elements to be hidden when the empty state is visible. And this is where I found some limitations on the current version of Figma. I'm pretty sure they will improve it later because these are the initial state of advanced prototyping in Figma. So right now I can only link my frames or my layers to a variable. I cannot use formulas. For example, these two needs to be the opposite of my current variable. When the variable is true, I want these to be hidden. And when it's false, I want it to be visible. But I cannot do that right now. So I need to create a new variable just to be the opposite of empty car. And we're going to call it items in card. And this will be false. So we're going to link these two two items in card. And as you can see, they immediately disappear because false means not visible in Figma. And now to set the add to card button as a trigger, we select the button, come here in prototype, and we can see that these already have some interactions coming from the parent component. And we're going to add more interactions to the same trigger. We're going to click here and we're going to set variable. We're going to set empty card to false, press enter, and we're going to set items in card to true. Now, if I go to my preview, I can see that first I have the empty state. I come back, add something to my card, go to my card, and I see the version with items in my card. 
If you're liking this video so far, I only have one request for you, and that's to click the like button below. It will take you probably less than a second, but it really helps the channel. Thank you. I want to spend some time explaining how booleans work with our component variants. For example, here we have two variants for my card. If I come here to the property, I can see that I have a property called state and I have an empty and full version. And to link it to a boolean, I need to go to my instance, come here to the component menu, click here. But as you can see here, I cannot find my boolean variables right now. And the reason is because this property is currently not a boolean. So let's change this to items in cart. And let's make this be no and yes instead of empty and full. And now if I come back to my instant, I can see that this is a boolean. And if I click here, I see my boolean variables here. I select this one, but now I have another issue that if I hover here, it explains that my values don't map with my variant. And that's because my current values are now set to no and yes. And if I come here to my variable, this is false and true. So in order for them to map, I need to use false and true. So I come here and I change this to false and this one true. And if I come back to my instant, I can see that I don't have that error anymore. And if I open my prototype, as soon as I add something, this change to my full version. So far, we're able to increase the quantity, add it to my car. I see the full version and I have my product here. But as you probably notice, the quantity doesn't match and this is always zero. And also you can see that my price is always zero here. So let's fix that. For that, we need to create more numbered variables. The first one will be for the total quantity and I'll call it total card quantity. And I will set the default value to zero. The second one will be my product price. And this is a unit price. And right now, as you can see here is 84 and I will set it to 84. And the last one is my total price on the card. This will be total card price and the default value will be zero. And to work with the item in the card and my order value, I will change this momentarily to false and this one to true. So I have this version visible. Now I will link all the numbers to the new variables. So this one, I will link it to my total card price. This one, I will link it to total card quantity and same for this one. And actually I can go here and link it directly on my prime component. And now we need to add more actions to my add a card button. So I select the button. I'm here in prototype, we're going to use the same tab trigger and we're going to add more actions. First, I will close off this so I have more space. I will add an action to set the variable and we're going to set total card quantity to be total card quantity plus my product quantity. That is the number here. And I see that I have a typer here. I'll fix it real quick. And now when I check the prototype, when I add something to my cart, you can see that the quantity is updated and the same is reflected here. Now for the price, I'll add another action to the bottom. I'll click here, prototype, same trigger. And here we're going to add a new action, set variable. And this time we want to set total card price to be the price of the product multiplied by the total card quantity that we have. And now if I preview this, let's add to add a car come here and I can see that my price reflects the number of products we have on the car. To avoid making this video really long, I will leave the interactions like that. And if you want to practice what you just learned, I recommend you to add interactions on this stepper and make this close button delete your car item and make the empty state reappear. As I mentioned before, you can find the Figma link in the description. So with only two frames, we were able to make this car component fully interactive. If you found this video helpful and you want to learn more about Figma, follow me and see you on my next tutorial. Bye bye.